This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Honey and by Raycon. But we'll get to them soon. Uh, in the 58 years since Soviet cosmonaut and hero Yuri Gagarin orbited Earth aboard Vostok 1, a total of 536 people have gone to space, which is simultaneously a lot of people, but also it's really a very small and exclusive club. Mm -hmm. I mean, even smaller is the total number of people who have been aboard the International Space Station since its first expedition in the year 2000. It's just 237 people total. Who've Very been exclusive. There. Yeah. Or at least I'm pretty sure that's the number. Uh, it's kind of hard to nail down, but it's, it's close at the very least. Mm -hmm. Anyways, not a lot of people. And these, of course, are not average folks. Uh, even if a person hits all the prerequisites in terms of education and career and physical health and fitness, your odds of actually being accepted in an astronaut training program are slim. And even then, you still might, for whatever reason, never actually end up going into space. Mm hmm now, space programs try their damnedest to make sure the people they're spending billions of dollars to send into space aren't going to be a liability in any possible way. So it's understandable that you don't hear much about interpersonal drama in space. These are absurdly normal, sane, intelligent, work-focused people, after all. Mm -hmm. No drama. It says it right on the door when you No the drama. Leave the drama <laughs> on Earth. Yep. The bouncer at the space station, yeah. mm -mm, keep it out of here. <laughs> Uh, but no, no screening process is perfect, though, and there's a first time for everything. And it sounds like, for the first time ever, an astronaut has committed a space crime. Space crime. A crime in space. And yes, we can hear you loudly typing away down there that, actually, astronaut Lisa Nowak committed the first ever space crime back in 2007 when she put on an adult diaper and drove cross-country to apparently try to either kidnap her ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend, or... Or maybe kill her, I don't know. There's still a lot of questions there. But uh, that was just an Earth crime committed by someone who'd been to space. Yeah, not the same. Not a space crime. <laughs> now, with your pedantry out of the way, let's look at this actual space crime. Yeah. Now, firstly, we are proud to report that, like with that previously mentioned Earth crime, this space crime was also committed by a woman. Mm -hmm. So, lean in, ladies. I think we can consider this very specific glass ceiling thoroughly shattered. And it just sucked into the vacuum of space. <laughs> now, as for the crime itself, the space crime, it's, <laughs> it's unfortunately not nearly as cool as what you would expect from people forced to spend months with the same small group of co-workers in a totally remote location. I would have assumed that the first space crime would be getting over someone's shit and hitting yeah. one of the doors and sucking them into the vacuum of space. Yeah, you'd think it would be something that boils over. Like, or or like the, the scene from the original Rocket Man, not the remake with Taron Edgerton. The real Rocket Man. The one with Harlan, Harlan <laughs> Williams where he farts in the spacesuit yeah. and it slowly goes through the tube into the other spacesuit. Yeah. Now, they're maybe not a legal crime, but still a pretty funny space crime. Yeah. This wasn't that, though. Yeah, I mean, like every few years, some... Poor Russian bastard down in Antarctica just fucking loses it, tries to murder a colleague over some extremely petty shit. Mm -hmm. I think the last time it was like some other dude was reading books faster than him and then spoiling them. Stab. Yeah. Uh, but that is not the case here. Mm -mm. Uh, this space crime is actually technically a cyber crime. Wow. A cyber crime in, in space. space. Uh, as first reported by the New York Times, the suspected space hacker is Anne McLean, who was on the International Space Station as part of Expeditions 58 and 59 from December of 2018 until June 2019. And her resume leading up to becoming an astronaut is very impressive. Yeah. She graduated from West Point with a bachelor's in engineering, then went over to England and got master's degrees in both aerospace engineering and international relations, while also competing at the top level of British women's rugby. She actually almost competed in the 2006 Women's Rugby World Cup, but the Army called her back and had her go to Iraq for 15 months, where she flew 800 combat hours in various aircraft across 216 combat missions. She finished her time in the Army with the rank of Major, then went through the Navy's test pilot school, graduated, and was then almost immediately selected for NASA's class of 2013, which had over 6,300 applicants and only eight finalists. She did all of this by age 34, Wow. I have wasted my yeah. life. What the fuck have you done? I've nothing. done nothing. These motivated people really out here making me feel bad about myself. We should have never gone to space. This is just another way for people to brag. This is nothing but one-upmanship. <laughs> <laughs> now, not long after being accepted as a NASA astronaut, Anne McLean married Summer Warden, a former Air Force intelligence officer. But as Anne McLean's trip to space got closer, the marriage seems to have fallen apart. It's very she said, she said, but it sounds like a big point of conflict 
was Summer Warden's kid that she had given birth to a year before she met McLean. Mm -hmm. McLean apparently wanted to adopt the kid and actually be a parent, but uh, Warden resisted that for whatever reason and also got mad when McLean posted pictures on social media of her with her wife's kid, uh, apparently implying that she was the child's mother. How how dare she? It's it's kind of weird. You mm-hmm. you generally assume for most people that getting married when you already have a kid means that uh, you know your new spouse is going to take on a parental role and yeah. you want that. But it sounds like this is something. It's not the case, and they they probably should have discussed this before actually getting married. Yes, because that's where all of this stems from. Yeah, it's where you like go through the experiences as yeah. a couple and realize wanna, what <laughs> that you actually do want to spend the time together for the rest of your lives. Yeah. And I want to share my of... life with you, but I do not want to share my child with you. Don't even fucking look at him. That's my kid. Wow. Anyways, let's fast forward to 2018. Anne McLean accuses Summer Warden of assault. Warden denies it and claims it's a scheme by McLean to get custody of the kid. The case later gets dismissed and then Warden files for divorce. But divorces can take a while. And... <laughs> This was all happening, right, as Anne McLean had a pretty important work commitment that took precedence over any legal proceedings, which she just couldn't get out of. Uh, that very important thing was getting shot into space to live on the International Space Station for six months. A rock-solid uh, get-out-of-jail-free card. You know, I gotta go to space. I'm going to the ISS. Yeah, I imagine, can't make it. I can't, oh my god, I got the letter in the mail to come to court. <laughs> like, imagine if it's just for, like, jury duty, and you're like, yeah. actually, uh, I'm going to space? <laughs> Okay, yeah, we're all going to space, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's when you pull out your space card, your, yeah. your ISS membership card. Exactly. There's only like 237 of them. But of course, this was just bad timing. Yeah. We all ah. have this experience. It sounds like they weren't even able to file for legal separation before launch. Awkward. This broken marriage was just going to have to sit in limbo until McLean returned to Earth. Uh, but communication between the estranged spouses did continue during the ISS expedition, and Warden claims that McLean made comments about specific purchases Warden had made, which she shouldn't have had any way of knowing what those purchases were because she's in fucking space. Yeah, and we're, like, separated. We're getting divorced. I leave the city for a day, and I don't know what the hell's going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, So Warden uh, contacted her bank and asked for location info on recent account logins, and one of those logins came from a computer registered to NASA. Huh. Yeah, it might just be in Houston. Yeah. Or it could be in space. Wow. Now, Warden reached out to NASA claiming that her bank account had been illegally accessed from space and also alleging that McLean had made threats to her. And uh, NASA, of course, brought up these allegations with McLean. But the timeline here is really unclear. And it, it, it honestly, it kind of sounds like NASA's approach was just like, uh, well, I guess we'll deal with this when you're back on Earth. For now, can you not do anything like that, though? Fuck. We have no way. There's, this is not in the handbook. Yeah. In the meantime, Warden filed a complaint with the FTC uh, accusing McLean of identity theft, even though there weren't really any signs that anyone had moved or used any of the funds in the bank account. And then Warden's parents filed a complaint with NASA's inspector general, also alleging identity theft. Uh, but again, the person being accused of these crimes was in space, so any legal proceedings just had to wait. Because there aren't any lawyers in space, and they these things are... Space stuff is done on very rigid schedules. They can't just mm-hmm. be like, hey, uh, <laughs> can you just come on down real quick? Yeah. Well, Yeah. now I, I am excited to see the first lawyer that goes to space. Well, I, I think they technically have to send... They have to send both uh, parties of this lawsuit and the lawyer into space, space court. Space court. Yeah, space court. Space court. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the, you got to hit extra hard with the, the gavel because yeah, there's no gravity. Float, float around. you got to keep yeah. it on a straight. Oh, jeez. Anyways, uh, McLean did eventually get back to Earth and get herself an Earth lawyer. And they admitted that, yeah, she accessed her wife's bank account from space, uh, as she had done many times throughout their marriage while on Earth. So, okay. She was just checking out the fact that all, all the finances were in order and that Warden's kid was being taken care of. So what's the big deal, Come right? Come on. Uh, She said Warden never specifically told her the bank account was now off limits and that it was such a big no-no. If it was, why wouldn't they change the password? Hmm. We know precisely nothing about family law and how it pertains to alleged cybercrime, but McLean's defense seems like it makes sense, I guess. Uh, On the other hand, Warden and her parents are claiming that bank account snooping was part of a highly calculated and manipulative campaign to win custody of Warden's kid. So I, I, I don't know. Both these women seem like they might be a little bit nuts. And uh, the marriage definitely sounds like an absolute <laughs> train wreck. Bad marriage. Uh, it's very unclear what, if any, legal action is going to come of this. But uh, we look forward to it. The first landmark case in yeah. space. Space mark case. Whose jurisdiction does this fall under? 
Uh, apparently America's. We got the Space Force ready to we go. We did plant the flag on the moon, so space is ours. Yes. Legally, they didn't, they didn't show it in that liberal film. Yeah. But there's a flag on that moon. Mm-hmm. And it's ours. My flag. So it's American law when you go up there. You yeah. can have as many guns as you want in space. Yeah. I mean, I, I just want There's a lot of questions I have about why these people even got married in the first place. Uh, and also, it's just fascinating to me that someone like this accomplished, this successful, like just an amazing fucking resume could just fuck up so badly in like relationships. Well, also, like the, the idea that, I mean, I guess you can have a, some extra time filled with boredom up in the International Space yeah, Station. Yeah, you start snooping. Yeah, you're just like, man. Yeah, let's see what's on Facebook. Get, get to like the fourth page on Reddit and you're like, oh, God. Yeah, she's uh, you just on Facebook at her like, Soon to be ex wife's profile. It's like, well, that's a pretty nice bag she's carrying. I wonder if she's. It's pretty expensive. Spending all this money and not taking care mm. of the kit. Well, you know, I do have the password. And I, I've got the internet up here. How would they ever know? You know, oh. innocent. I'll never tell. All the other astronauts are sleeping, mm-hmm. pooping, doing whatever they do. Maybe I'll just do a little snooping. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah, one more. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there you go. First space crime. Exactly. And not, certainly not the last. Once Definitely you, not the last. Once you start sending uh, your tourists up into space, uh, there's going to be a lot of space crime. Mm-hmm. That bouncer's going to have his hands full. Yeah. And uh, whew, can't wait. Well, we, wa- we witnessed history, folks. Yeah, wow. Mm-hmm. And almost 50 years to the day since we landed on the moon. Pretty good run. Yeah. Crime free. Yeah, it's crime free. <laughs> space has been crime free for just, a, and X he did the sign. <laughs> Uh, well, moving on now. Uh, we should probably at least touch on this week's top social media self own uh, Brett Stevens and the Bed Bug. Oh, Brett Stevens, for those who don't know, is a newspaper opinion columnist who spent most of his career at the Wall Street Journal, but for the last two years has written for the New York Times. Uh, politically, he's a never Trump conservative, meaning that he's pretty much okay with everything that the federal government does. He just doesn't like the guy who's in charge mm-hmm. of it. Uh, it's, it's a particularly insufferable like subgroup of people that is way overly represented in the media, Mm. if you look at the polling. Anyway, his writing has been criticized a lot over the years for a a variety of reasons, for being just bad writing or racist or ill-informed or just wrong, incorrect. Mm -hmm. And like so many American newspaper columnists on the slower news weeks, his old standby for what to write about is often free speech, uh, specifically how millennials are ruining it with their safe spaces and their trigger warnings. Mm. And that detail is very important for understanding the next part. So on Monday, a New York Times assistant editor tweeted, Breaking! There are bed bugs in the New York Times newsroom. And a few hours later, George Washington University professor Dave Karp logged on to Twitter.com, saw the bed bug tweet, and decided to do a little joke, quoting uh, the, the thing with the caption, The bed bugs are a metaphor. The bed bugs are Brett Stevens. An insult for sure, but... To be clear, talking shit on Brett Stevens is a Twitter pastime for large chunks of that website. And compared to a lot of that shit talk, comparing Brett Stevens to a bed bug is pretty mild. Yeah. Also, David Karp didn't have much of a following. And according to him, his bed bug joke got nine likes and zero retweets. Uh, it also didn't directly tag Brett Stevens. Hmm. Nevertheless, according to the professor, a few hours later on Monday night, Brett Stevens emailed him personally to confront him about his very mean bed bug tweet and also CC Dave Karp's boss. Huh. A tattletale. Huh. Yes, the email reads as follows. Dear Dr. Karp, someone just pointed out a tweet you wrote about me calling me a bed bug. I'm often amazed about the things supposedly decent people are prepared to say about other people, people they've never met on Twitter. I think you've set a new standard. I would welcome the opportunity for you to come to my home, meet my wife and kids, talk to us for a few minutes, and then call me a bed bug to my face. That would take some genuine courage and intellectual integrity on your part. I promise to be courteous no matter what you have to say. Maybe it'll make you feel better about yourself. Please consider this a standing invitation. You are more than welcome to bring your significant other. Cordially, Brett Stevens. And then he also uh, helpfully copy-pasted the bedbugs tweet at the bottom of the email. Sounds like a real fun person to be around. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, what happened next shouldn't surprise anyone, especially someone considered smart enough and insightful enough to write for a major newspaper in the, uh, in the country. Uh, 
Brett Stevens is apparently not familiar what's, with what's called the Streisand effect, but uh, what better way to learn than yeah. diving in head first? His attempt to bizarrely intimidate a guy who wrote a mean tweet about him, which Stevens 100% saw because he searches his own name and scrolls through every single result, did not stop the Brett Stevens mockery. In fact, a whole lot more people started saying mean things and uh, making fun of Brett Bedbug Stevens. <laughs> Now, at this point, Bedbug Brett had certainly made a goof. Yeah. But, you know, rather than do literally anything to not bring further attention to this, he instead woke up the next morning and tweeted, Time to do what I long ago promised to do. Twitter is a sewer. It brings out the worst in humanity. I sincerely apologize for any part I've played in making it worse, and to anyone I've ever hurt. Thanks to all of my followers, but I'm deactivating this account. Hmm. And, you know, I, okay, fine. Whatever, quit Twitter over a fucking bed bug joke. But at least that's the end of that, right? Except no, almost immediately after sending that tweet, and he probably literally sent this tweet like in the fucking toilet at MSNBC because he was on MSNBC right after that, sitting down for an interview about this whole stupid fucking debacle where he defended his actions saying, there's a bad history of being analogized to insects that goes back to a lot of totalitarian regimes in the past. <laughs> and quote, I think Twitter brings out the worst in its users. Wow, what a snow! Really uh, making a mountain out of a molehill here, Brett. Yeah, anyways, Brett Stevens remains off Twitter while David Karp has gained a sizable Twitter following out of this extremely dumb situation. He's also done a bunch of interviews about what happened and seems like a pretty nice guy who wouldn't have even posted the email if Brett Stevens hadn't CC'd his boss and suddenly tried to get him disciplined in his job because that's something you would expect from someone who hates free speech not someone who's been whining about his free speech being under attack for the last decade despite getting to write whatever the hell he wants in a newspaper that's read around the world. Anyways, the, thus concludes the tale of Bedbug Brett Stevens. Yeah, now you know. And that was the coincidentally came out because of all the bedbug talk the day that like one of Trump's resorts was like, yeah, people have been complaining about bedbugs there. I mean, bedbugs are... They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I've never had them, and I, I, I thank my lucky stars every day. Yeah. It's uh, not great. They're, 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 they have such mass in this country that mm -hmm. that's why every night before your mom tucks you into bed. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Exactly. Because they'll get you. No son of mine will let those bed bugs bite. Mm -hmm. Anyways, before we get to the headlines part of the show, it's time now for a word from this week's sponsor. Starting with Honey. Nine times out of ten, shopping online beats going to the store. There's no driving, no crowds, no showing up only to find out that what you want is out of stock. Ugh. But also, nine times out of ten, you're overpaying when you shop online, unless you use Honey. Honey is a free browser extension that saves you money everywhere you shop online. Honey finds coupon codes and other discounts across the web and applies them to your cart automatically so you can be sure that you're getting the best possible deal. You will be surprised at how much money you end up saving. The average Honey user saves around $126 per year, and you know what, that's a lot of avocado toast. <laughs> Over 10 million people are already saving with Honey. Honey has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome store, and Time Magazine calls Honey basically free money. There's no reason not to use it. It's free. It installs on your computer with just two clicks, and it'll save you money so you can treat yourself to something nice. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash weird. That is joinhoney.com slash weird so that they know you came from us. Let them know. And this episode is sponsored by Raycon. In these post-headphone jack times that we live in, Everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds. Mm. But before you go dropping stupid amounts of money, hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. We've both been using Raycon's E50 earbuds for the last few months for travel exercise and uh, not annoying our wives with our bad taste in music. Mm. And it's kind of shocking how great they sound and how comfortable they fit, uh, especially considering that Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of most other premium wireless earbuds on the market. Yeah, I like, love these things. Yeah, I'm very happy with them. Unlike some of your other options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems. And of course, they don't just look great if you can see them. Discreet. They sound great, too. You look like a, a, a Secret Service guy. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds for everyone in a range of fun colors at an unbelievable price. And uh, we generally love our Raycon earbuds. We use them. I, I use mine every day yeah. because my first test with these things was like, all right, I had the earbuds with the wire on them because yeah. I was scared that they'd pop out. And so I go on my runs, and not once have they fallen out of my ears or have I even been worried about them falling yeah. out. They're very snug and secure. Anyways, if you're interested in some wireless earbuds, you can go to buyraycon.com slash weeklyweird, all one word, and you'll get 15% off your order of Raycon wireless earbuds. If you've been eyeing a pair, 
Time to get an amazing deal on them. It's buyraycon.com slash weekly weird. And just like that, they're gone. They also have a carrying case yeah, that will charge. Charging, charging case. Very mm -hmm. nice. Anyways, let's get into some headlines, starting with woman rescued after being trapped in septic tank for three days. And it was her daughter that found her, right? Well, yeah, because like they're <laughs> Her family, like, members hadn't heard from her in three days. They're starting to worry. They're like, we need to go check on her. She might be fucking dead. Yeah. We need to go have a look. And they showed up. And she, she lives on a large property, and it was, like, somewhere in her yard. Yeah, she'd been, you know, excavating for some reason. And uh, they're not sure how it happened, but she fell in a, a big old, like, hole that was deep enough to that you're not getting out of it. And it was uh, full of piss and shit. Yeah. And uh, she was down there for three days. My favorite, I don't know if it was in the article that you read. I don't know if anyone... Uh, exposed the woman after the initial article. She did not like, want her identity. Yeah, they were like, out of respect for the privacy, <laughs> we will not include this woman or her family's name. I, I fully understand that. Absolutely. Yeah. You would never want to be known as, like, the fucking shit lady. Yeah, you'd never live that down. Absolutely not. You've already been through the worst that yeah, life has to offer. That's got to be one of the most traumatizing things to go through. Like, I'm going to fucking die in a pile of my own a pile shit. of my own piss and shit. Mm -hmm. And like as now, it slowly like eats away my like my skin. I, yeah, and she's probably gonna have to be on fucking antibiotics for like the next year. Yeah, that can't be good. But uh, yeah, like hey, it's a nightmare. Come at least she lived. Would yeah. have, probably wouldn't have been able to use the headline. It was like woman dies in her own septic tank after being down there for a week. Not as fun. Yuck. We're glad you're okay, lady. Yes, and we won't <laughs> tell anyone what your name is. We will not tell a soul. <laughs> Florida police found an unusual burglary suspect at a local high school. A raccoon inside a vending machine. Oh, that's cute. It is very cute. But also uh, probably leaving drop-ins and opening things yeah, that people are eating. You're going to have to throw that vending machine out. Just Sorry. the whole thing. Sorry, guys. Get no, rid more, of it. no more soda pops. No. Told you. You're going to have to drink water and milk. Was the raccoon just fat and exhausted when they found it? Uh, just let me die. I was I've already so. lived in heaven. I don't know. Yeah, you would... You would hope. All you could see was it just like looking out the window, because like it, it, you know, they can squeeze in. You squeezed in through where you reach your your hand in, and mm -hmm. ah, fuck, can't I'm get stuck. out, stuck. No. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those raccoons, they're uh, very crafty, and they got hands like humans. They can yeah. do just whatever he, they he want. Would've, he would have definitely stolen a few items if he, uh, you know, had held the door open behind him. Mm -hmm. That's that's what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, you got to help people out. He was a friendly raccoon that would bring out an extra Reese cup. <laughs> Everyone that ordered one. Extra Reese. <laughs> yeah. Reese's is plural. Yeah, sure. UK doctors saved Carpenter's severed hand by sewing it to his groin for two weeks. So it was uh, the ability to regrow based off of... So, did they put it right onto his dick and balls or just uh, near his groin area? Uh, or? The groin area. Yeah. I, they didn't say exactly where, but They're yeah. like, sir, we, we got to attach it somewhere. We're, and he's like, oh, can you do it in the most discreet place possible? I don't want to be walking around. Make it around. look like I got a big dick. I don't want to be walking around with like an arm grown or a hand grown out of my arm or my leg. But uh, yeah. down there, you know, if people are meat gazing, that's on them. Yeah. It's a pretty horrifying injury. He like, with like a circular saw... It, like, uh, took off his in Ooh. his index and his thumb, just clean off. So they had that section, but the skin was so fucking mangled that they're like, there's not enough skin to attach it. So we're going to just sew up what's left it, and then uh, the, the, the piece that's been removed, we're just going to, you know, cut open a little piece of his, uh, his groin, you know, stick it up in there for a few days, let the skin heal, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back for it in, like, you know, two I weeks. I don't know, two weeks. Yeah. And you just... You just be uh, nice and gentle with that hand that now lives right next to your dick. Yeah. Sir. They should have gone all the way and just uh, taken his other one and attached them both to his butt so he could yeah. literally make it clap. They should have just clap. cut off all of his body parts and just mixed them up and be like, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> now you <laughs> won't notice that a hand's on your groin because everything else, everything is, else is all mixed up. We're a fun hospital. <laughs> <laughs> fun hospital. I love fun hospitals. Yeah. They always have the most horrific stories. Yeah. Beekeeper turns honey-stealing bears into taste testers. I love this. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this beekeeper out in Turkey. I didn't know Turkey had bears, but this bear looks fucking huge. And uh, yeah, he kept his his stuff kept getting jacked by bears. Very frustrating. So he decided to you know take that situation and turn it into a positive. Uh, and so he'd like lay out he'd label and lay out like a bunch of different types of honey next to each other, and then set up a uh, hidden cameras and he'd record the bears. And he found that. Uh, that the most expensive honey that he sold, like the the one that's regarded as like a delicacy, was mm -hmm. what the bear preferred. So now mm -hmm. he's got the bears sealed. bear approved. Yeah, like I, w I they need to make this into some sort of show because I'm curious. Like I want to see them put like 
you know, all the chicken sandwiches out. Yeah, exactly. All the, you know, we can finally know for sure, is it Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? You put them both out on a bench, mm-hmm. wait for nightfall, and whichever one the bear chooses first is officially the best sandwich. Yes. According to bears. Well, it's the only way to know for sure. Yeah. I, an impartial jury. I only eat food that's been bear tested. Mm-hmm. Toy maker Hasbro acquires rap label Death Row Records. Just a a perfect 2019 headline. Tupac is coming to Monopoly. Mm-hmm. Suge Knight is uh, he's a new character in My Little Pony. No, it's uh, they Hasbro bought some other fucking giant like intellectual property house that also happened to have purchased oh. Death Row back in the day when Suge Knight needed to sell it off because he was in a bunch of legal trouble. But yeah, now uh, Hasbro owns. Death Row Records. And, Which is uh, hilarious. And some of the most iconic gangster rap albums <laughs> of the early 90s are yeah. in the wow. Hasbro vault. Now all those new Transformers movies that are coming out down the road will they'll have free access. Yeah. I mean, they're going to have to censor them pretty heavily. Mm-hmm. They, they, they invented the whole, like, uh, parental... Uh, they're responsible for it, yeah. Yeah, the, the little Tipper Gore label. Mm-hmm. Like, these are the albums that caused that. So that's cool. Yeah. That's fun headline. Fun news. Connecticut man tests his new guns by firing into a park full of kids playing softball. I was just testing them out. I just wanted to see if they worked. It was a goof. Where am I supposed to go with, a, with my guns to shoot at them? Say, like, oh there's, a, oh, there's a place where you can shoot a gun and it's not, like, possibly with people? What, so what is it, some sort of gun range? I'm assuming that because we're even covering this that no one got hurt. No, but there was a full-on, like, softball game happening. People were like, what the fuck is going on? It caused a bit of a panic, as you might imagine. Yeah. Yeah, this guy, he uh, he seems like he, he had just bought the guns. He was also shit-faced, though. They found, like, a bunch of, like, uh, airline uh, shooters yeah. in his car. Of course. So, I mean, I don't know how this is going to play out. Seems seems like, you know, a good, pretty good uh, cause to remove, take, his guns take away. the guns away, uh, to your, grab the guns. Your Honor, I couldn't have committed a crime because I was drunk. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I, I was drunk. I, my aim was terrible. I was never going to hit anyone. It's like that lady up in space when she crawls out of her bunk every morning and just little vodka shooters floating yeah. around space. <laughs> That's what space is like. Yeah. Everyone just gets drunk and parties up there. The ISS does not allow alcohol, and apparently it was a, it was a very big... Uh, For the Russians? Yeah, it was a big... <laughs> the Russians were not happy about that because on the... Uh, well, it's just vodka. Yeah, I think it was... Whichever one... Was there the Soyuz? No, I don't know. Whatever the Russian uh, space station was the most recent one like they allowed it like they had little they had rations of vodka yeah. and they're like it's fine nothing bad ever happens you just uh, you know you don't get drunk when you do a spacewalk obviously yeah it's for, it's for when you're relaxing you have a little vodka so it reminds you of home you, 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 stay, you stay sane they need to add a bar to the space, space bar yeah space bar and they need to hire Nick Gregorio, <laughs> yeah, the bartender, yeah. and uh, take everyone's verbal abuse mm-hmm. and disrespect. <laughs> that was a great show for the unintended reason of that show. That was my favorite part of it. I was just like, go on there <laughs> Abusing and just, the host. Like, just be really mean to Nick to the point where sometimes it felt like he was taking it personally and I had to really like dial it back. Well, he's the one nice. in the suit, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Women steal baby stroller from store, leaves one of their children behind. I mean, the strollers are expensive mm-hmm. from what I hear. Uh, so you, you're in the midst of stealing this thing, and it's easy to, it's easy right. to forget. Well, I got what I wanted. That's it. People forget kids all the time. Yeah, it's real you troubling. Live, you live decades of your life, potentially, without these things yeah. following you around, and then all of a sudden you're supposed to like, be able oh, to remember things? Yeah, it's like, oh, I need this with me all the time. Like Even like even trying to keep my phone on me at all times. Like Sometimes I'll, you know, I'll leave it somewhere. You need to stick a tile to that kid. One of those uh, locations. Yeah, things. and you just start like, beeping when it's uh, yeah, yeah. farther it's away. Far, far away. It's a good product idea. Baby trackers, baby. Come on, Johnson & Johnson or whoever makes the baby stuff. They can't afford it anymore. They had yeah. to spend like $600 billion on the opioid crisis. Ooh, yeah, that's true. But they were supposed to spend like $17 billion, so their stock went up when they only oh, got fined wow. like $600 God billion. bless America. Uh-huh. Uh, Chinese student denied entry to U.S. for carrying bulletproof vest. Yeah, well... Uh, yeah, so he, you know. You wait till you get to America to buy one of our bulletproof vests. I, apparently. This is the trade war in action. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's coming to America to do his studies. He's watching the news. He's like, oh, man. Doesn't want to die. Ah, shit. A lot of guns in America. A lot of people getting shot. Oh, I have a great idea. I'll buy a Kevlar vest and uh, I'll bring it with me. I'll just wear it at all times. And that way my, my nagging parents, they won't worry about me as much. I don't see why this is legal. I, I I don't know. I've heard other stories like uh, law enforcement is like really weird about people wearing bulletproof vests. 
uh, in public or like anywhere. They hate Fifty Cent. Yeah, like I've heard of people like wearing even like fake ones to like dumb parties. Like that cute one that the Fox reporter wore at the border. Ah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've heard of like people, you know, going out in public with like fake bulletproof vests and cops like hassling them, and be like, what, "Why are you wearing that?" Mm-hmm. Like, it's uh, who cares? Well, I don't know. It's weird. Maybe someone can explain that to us. Please do. Anyway, final headline: Dairy Queen burgers are not made of human meat. Store confirms after Fed swarm restaurant. Oh, we gotta get out ahead of this. <laughs> people are gonna think the worst. Well, it is weird. Like they so that Dairy Queen got this Dairy Queen got stormed. Uh, they didn't know why at first, and that's where the rumors come from. But yes. it, it was because, like, I think one of the employees was running some sort of money racket out of the store mm-hmm. and was keeping some illegal shit there. But, you know, it took a couple days before the story came out. So the, 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 the local community, the busybodies... I heard they were serving uh, yeah. human meat, hey, and I saw one of the humans, and it waved at me. Pretty much. Like, yeah. oh, bro, you know what I heard? And, you know, I, the last time I was there, I was like, there's something wrong with this meat. I heard, because my, my dad, my dad's like, his best friend's brother is actually the head of the FBI. Yeah. He said, it's because was- they're serving human meat. See, we can still have, uh, you know, little, uh, not conspiracy theories, uh, uh, what are they called? Like Manson sucking his own dick. Yeah, that's urban legend. Urban legend. We can still have those in the age of the internet. You just need a... A, a government agency that keeps things extremely classified from the yeah. locals for a short period of time. Yeah. And then you let it run wild. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even include this, but speaking of conspiracy theories, uh, yeah. Uh, it, well, it, t- it took them like three weeks, but they finally checked the cameras in uh, Jeffrey Epstein's cell block and turns out they were broken the Both whole time. Broken. God. How t- crazy. All these coincidences, they're really, it's just really, this, this Epstein guy, just the worst luck. Terrible luck. Well, anyways, that's it for uh, Weekly Weird News this week. Please be sure to check out our exclusive podcast if you're a member of our Patreon or a YouTube member. Uh, just go over to the Patreon, check the posts. We, if you go to Patreon and sign up, uh, five bucks or more a month will help the show out and you get access to all of our exclusive podcasts. And, uh, and, and after you're done with that, we have two new episodes here, an episode of News Dump, where we talk about all the new Disney stuff and more things that you can't bring um, onto a plane, <laughs> and uh, a new episode of uh, Tech News Day. So check both those out. We will see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye.